Hey everyone, Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge, and what we're going to talk about in this video is if you could define a failure of a presidency, would it look any different than the one that happened last year? Let's go ahead and get started. Just to let you know, uh, I am on YouTube, that's where I post a lot of videos, but I do exclusive videos on Rumble uh, every week. So if you want to see exclusive content, unedited, uncensored comment, uh, content on my Rumble, I've got a pinned link in the uh, comment section. And if you want to go over to Rumble and see some of my uncensored videos, I'll be able to say a lot more stuff uh, than I do here on YouTube. I don't know if you've been paying attention or not, but the numbers of inflation just came out today, and it is absolutely atrocious. Uh, what I've been looking at here is, is I've looked at a lot of different sources on these numbers, but they claim 7% inflation, uh, the highest in 40 years. Uh, so that would be going having to go back to all the fruits of the Jimmy Carter presidency. A uh, really successful president, if you remember, Jimmy Carter is widely regarded as a successful, he's not. You guys that are younger have to understand, like Jimmy Carter was was before Biden uh, considered probably the worst economic president and geopolitical president uh, in our nation's history. Uh, disaster after disaster. He was a one-term president. Uh, nice guy, horrible leader. Uh, but needless to say, uh, what we're looking at here, guys, is... They say 7% inflation, but if inflation was calculated the way that it was back in the early 1980s, it would realistically be more like 15% inflation right now. That means that that your dollar is devalued to the point now where, where it's it's... This is not healthy by any measure. And I've got uh, questions out there for people that, that I don't even know who would support this guy anymore. Um, I don't know how you could support anybody who's had this disastrous of a first year in office. Well, it's not quite a year. We've got about a week left until he's been in office for a year. So within that year, I just want to read you guys some figures. Uh, gas is up 49.6%, so 50% more than it was last year. Uh, we also have eggs that are up 11%. Uh, fish is up 10%. Used vehicles up 37%. Meat products up 10%. So across the entire board, life, if it was difficult for you last year or the year before that, has become exponentially more difficult. If you're a person or a family that was trying to make ends meet right back then, I can't imagine how hard that would be right now if you're living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, but keep in mind, guys, there's a lot of reasons why this is the case, and I can zero it down to exactly one reason government involvement in the economy, government policy specifically. Uh, when you're looking at inflation to this degree, which very rarely happens in the United States, uh, but when you're looking at the spending, the printing of money by the Fed, all those stimulus checks that all, all people wanted, oh, we gotta get, we got to get stimulus checks. All, the reason why the, the dollar is so devalued is because of that, because of the printing, because of the government spending, because of the flooding the economy with, with currency that is, is increasingly less and less valuable. I'll, I'll take you all the way back to basic rules of economics. Inflation is a tax on everyone. It, it is truly a tax. It's a tax that a lot of people may not even realize it. But if you keep going to the grocery store week after week, month after month, and noticing that your bill keeps getting higher and higher despite you spend, uh, buying the exact same stuff, that's because of inflation. And inflation is a tax that hits the most productive members of society. People that go to work every day. People that, that produce jobs. People that contribute to our economy. That is a very heavy tax that we've had to pay over the last year. This is is all due to government. This has nothing to do with the market. Uh, when you talk about shortages, why are there shortages? Well, let's figure it out because people can't unload their cargo. You know, why are there shortages of, of products across the entire board from meat to bagels to just about it, to anything you can imagine? It's, the, the supply is much shorter due to government interference. You know, we have a secretary of uh, transportation who was in absentia for the vast majority of time, uh, didn't, just didn't want to show up to work. So while, while cargo ships are stacked outside the harbors. And if you guys think that, that, that it's bad on the west coast of the United States, you ought to check out what's going on in Europe. You ought to check about all those shortages, all those direct government interference there. And if you have any doubt that we live in a propagandist news media, uh, NBC has said, this is the best economy since the 1960s. Really? D does it feel like the best economy out there since the 1960s for most of you people watching this video? Does it feel like the best economy when your dollar is, is substantially less 
You know, if you've got your money in your, in your bank account and it's not earning any interest at all, it's, it's worth less sitting in there. If you just put it in the bank, it's worth less now, this time this year, than it was last year. It, it, it has less purchasing power. I've got bad news for you guys out there. Uh, this is going to last a very long time. Inflation's not even set to peak until later on this year. That's per the, the, the Federal Reserve chairman. You know, uh, we, when we're looking at, at things happening, it's, it's going to, the, the currency is going to continue to be inflated. Uh, I don't see government stopping printing anytime soon. I don't see uh, all of a sudden that the president of the United States or anybody in his cabinet is going to get a fix on what's happening. Uh, so how do we fix this? Well, first of all, the president needs to resign. Uh, his entire cabinet, he, his stupid vice president, he needs to resign. He needs to, to just admit that he is completely out of his league. He's mentally incapable of processing information and making decisions. He, you guys, uh, he's, I don't know if you guys realize this or not, but when he gives his speeches, he's not in the actual Oval Office. Like they created a fake Oval Office for him. Like the windows that you see behind him, like those are screens. Those are like CGI things that they pump in. So, that, so he's a fake president. Uh, he, he's mentally incapable of decision making. He has the least experienced cabinet that in my entire lifetime that I've seen. There's nobody there that has held a private sector job. These are government bureaucrats. He, Biden himself has been in government for over 50 years. He's accomplished nothing. Uh, so basically what the American people did was they took a successful businessman who was a president of the United States with a roaring economy and, 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 and did a great job and replaced him with an incompetent DC creature who has accomplished nothing in in 50 years in government. In fact, the only thing he has accomplished is misery and abject bureaucracy. That, that's what he's accomplished. So you guys really want to do this? First thing Biden needs to do is resign. Harris needs to resign. Uh, the entire cabinet needs to resign. We need to get someone who is competent in the White House. We need to have a leader that is that knows how to make business decisions, that knows how to make governmental policy decisions that is helpful to the American citizenry, that is helpful to our economy. Next thing we need to do is audit the Federal Reserve immediately. The Federal Reserve has never been audited in its, since its inception in 1913. I would like to get people in there that know how to look at books. By the way, the government has no problem auditing its own citizens. I think it's only fair that the citizens of this country audit the federal government. And in fact, the Federal Reserve is not the federal government, but it does need to be audited and it does their books need to be looked at with all the money that they have printed over all these years. No, guys, better strap in. Um, it's, it's been not even a year yet and, and we're already looking at catastrophic economic numbers. We're looking at, at the curtailing of liberties during this buffoon's presidency uh, that would have been unheard of in American history if we would look back at our time. You're looking at, at people uh, that are hurting severely economically. Freedoms are being stripped away every single day, not through legislation, but by him waving a little wand through his little bureau, bureaucrats, through his little agencies. They can't pass any legislation because they know it's severely unpopular, so they have to use the government edict model. That is not how a constitutional republic works. A person in charge cannot just wave a magic wand and then tell people what to do. His stupid little vaccine mandate is going to get dick slapped at the Supreme Court is not going to happen, but the very fact that he thinks that he can do it is insulting enough to everyone's intelligence. If you found the information video helpful, subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow me on social media. That link is down below. Make sure you're subscribed as well. I know a lot of people have, have reported being un subscribe from the channel. And if you want to learn how to protect yourself against tyranny and you want to learn how to protect yourself and your family against the ever-increasing uh, criminal element of society, come out to Valor Ridge and we can help you do that. This is Reed Hendricks of Valor Ridge reminding you the lessons that we learn are written on the tombstones of others. We'll see you on the ridge.